Hello cave dwellers. I received a package from Elecro this week. It's their 5 inch Raspberry Pi touchscreen monitor. And you know what we like to do with Pi monitors on this channel? That's right, put them through their paces on RetroPie. So let's first get familiar with the hardware. You can find the usual suspects inside the package. A driver DVD and stylus. An HDMI adapter to connect the screen to the Pi. Stands to securely fasten it to the Pi. And of course the screen itself. Its native resolution is 800 by 480 pixels and it has a refresh rate of 60 Hz, which should be more than adequate for most classic gaming tasks. We need to supply 5 volts to power the screen, which can come through the micro USB port or the GPIO adapter seen here. A nice touch is the points below the GPIO adapter onto which you can solder directly your power input. And naturally video input is supplied through the HDMI port. A nice and often overlooked touch is the ability to turn the backlight off with this switch here. Size wise you're looking at 12 by 7 by 0.9 centimeters. It weighs in at 113 grams. And here's a 3.5 inch screen from another of my reviews for comparison. Installation is straightforward and will be familiar to anyone who's tried pretty much any of the small screens out there for the Pi. The screen slots straight onto the GPIO ports for power and the additional brackets can be fitted to give some extra support. Once it's on there, it's certainly on there solidly, there's no chance of it coming off. And the included HDMI adapter is slotted on there to complete the setup. So what then of the driver and software configuration? I'm certainly expecting this to be easier to set up than the SPI models that we've tried in the past, where those models used the GPIO port for video. This of course uses HDMI, a dedicated video port. And indeed, an image appears straight off the bat as soon as you turn this Pi on. So it's usable, but it's not quite right. We're missing a small portion of the screen here, down which these lines are displayed. And this is quickly and easily resolved by following the four steps on the included instructions to download and install the driver. Now if you should happen to find yourself using a less than perfect power supply, you'll experience this endless reboot cycling. As soon as the screen tries to draw a little more power, it causes the Pi to reboot. And this can be resolved by installing a decent power supply or a second power supply to the micro USB port on the screen to ensure it's getting enough power. In short, there are options to power this screen and that could be useful depending on the kind of project you're putting together and opens the screen up to be used with devices other than the Raspberry Pi. Should we take a look then at game performance? Why not? Here's Mario 64. Note, I am filming the screen close up with a camera, so there will be some screen glare and artifacting caused by the filming method. Initial impressions are very good. The frame rate is a solid 60 frames per second. Color depth is strong. And the blacks, while not perfect, aren't half bad for a screen of this price. There was no noticeable input lag, like I experienced on the SPI screens. And to demonstrate the frame rate, Here's some bullet hell for you, in the form of Fever SOS. Once again there's good colour range and depth, more so than you can actually see on this video footage, and there's absolutely no tearing in the image. At a price of around or just under £30, or about $35, US I'm really quite impressed with the quality. Up next is Outrun on the MAME emulator, another fast moving game that demonstrates what you can expect to achieve with this monitor. And as it handles fast paced games like this so well, you will of course have no problems watching movies through it, although the resolution is less than 720p, so your movies will be downscaled. 
but it would take the eye of a fighter pilot to notice the difference on such a small screen. My camera here really not doing the frame rate justice, Sonic running with all the speed and finesse of original Mega Drive hardware. So am I happy with this screen? Absolutely, this will be going in my next project, whatever I decide that to be, I'm confident that this will be able to tackle whatever I throw at it. We have of course ignored the touchscreen element of this screen, because this was purely aimed at retro pie and gaming, and that to me is just a bonus. My only complaint is a minor one, and that's that the HDMI adapter sticks out from the top ruining what would otherwise be clean lines around the screen and the pie. But in summary, this gets a big thumbs up in the retro man cave, and I have no hesitation in recommending it to you cave dwellers. I hope you found this review useful and informative, and if you enjoy this content, why not subscribe to my channel and come back soon for more. Take care, cave dwellers.